Hello, my name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating a preview release of Playbooks, a new addition to the Security Onion platform that will be available soon in version 24160. Playbooks is a tool to provide context and guidance to analysts when triaging and investigating alerts, and we think it's going to be a huge step forward in helping to reveal the most important data to your investigators. Keep in mind that this is a development version of Playbooks that I'm going to be showing you, so there might be some minor changes to the interface before the final version ships. With that said, it should be very similar in the finished release. Let's take a look at the Security Onion Alerts interface and how Playbooks fits into the analyst experience. As you can see, this is the classic alerts interface that you know from the Security Onion console. We've got all of the alerts generated in this environment over the last 24 hours, sorted by count, that is the number of times that the rule is fired, and also marked with the module that generated the alert, as well as its severity rating. Over here on the right is the details panel that we added in version 24120, which shows additional context information when an alerting rule is selected. For example, let's take a look at this SANCAT post activity alert. It's high severity, so it seems like a good place to start. If I click on the eye icon next to the rule count, it will populate the details panel on the right with information about the rule that could be helpful to an analyst. This gives us some useful information about why the rule triggered what sort of network artifacts it's looking for, and what exactly the SANCAT software does. In this case, it appears to be generating beacon traffic that is getting flagged by Suricata. That's all great information, especially for a neophyte analyst who might not be familiar with this particular implant. But what if they want to get a little more guidance with the investigation? Well, we'll start by drilling down into this group of alerts. And since I'm recording this on a smaller screen, Let's go ahead and turn off that details panel so we can get a little more horizontal space. That's better. You see here we've got 16 individual alerts, all between the same source and destination IPs and ports. Seems like it might indeed be a beacon. We can open up one of these items to get the details. And here you see the new addition to the interface. On the left, under alert details, is the classic view of the alert that you're used to source IP, destination IP, rule information, and so on. That all works the same way it does in earlier versions. But here on the right, there's a new tab for guided analysis. That's the Playbooks feature. For every alerting rule, there is a corresponding playbook. Sometimes it's specific to a particular rule. There may be an investigation script for a certain C2 or a piece of malware that includes particular details for the analysts. Sometimes there's a more general playbook, depending upon the category or class of the alert. In this case, we're looking at a general Emerging Threats Malware playbook. And sometimes it may be general best practices for the event module, things to check if you get any NIDS alert. In any case, every alert in SOC will come with a set of investigation steps like this. Let's open up the first one. What is the specific type of malware activity being detected? You'll see here there are four elements. There's context, explaining what exactly we're looking for in this step. In this case, we want to make sure that we know what stage of the attack is being alerted on in order to help prioritize response. There's also a data time range, which in this case is the specific network flow that triggered the alert. Next is a hunt query, indicating what we're looking for at this step, alerts matching this community ID. And finally, there's instant insight, a summary of the results of that hunt query formatted in line and automatically retrieved for the analyst. If we want to pivot to that hunt, it's easily done. We'll see that in a moment. The goal here is to put the necessary context in front of the analyst, and we're doing just that. Show me any other alerts for this network flow is very helpful information. Imagine a low and slow exfiltration attack, for example, that took place over the course of an hours long TCP connection. All of those alerts would be pulled and used to populate this table. Here, it looks like we've just got the one alert, so let's move on to the next step. Now we're going to do a historical search for this alert over the last 30 days, as you can see from the date range, to determine whether this has come up in our environment before. Maybe it's a false positive. Maybe this happens every time Jim in accounting backs up his desktop to some cloud service. 
Or maybe this is a beacon that's been reaching out since last week and nobody triaged the alerts before. Or worse yet, dismissed them out of hand. In either case, this will show us some history. Since we're ingesting endpoint logs via the Elastic Agent, our recommended next step is to see exactly what process on the endpoint is generating this traffic. As you can see from our Instant Insight table here, the suspicious traffic is coming from a computer named mbishopwin10, username mbishop, and a process named updater.exe. The process started at 1725 and ended at 1732, according to the corresponding connection attempted and disconnect received logs that you see here. This is a good place to pivot to the actual hunt screen. If we middle click on the crosshairs icon here to open in a new tab, you'll see a full hunt window opens with this playbook query already populated. Now here are the two items that we saw on the table, but because we're in a hunt window, we have all of the pivots available to us. We can click on one of these items and get more information about the process. Here we see more information about the process itself, including the command line that launched it. If there were other endpoint telemetry logs from this process, like DNS queries or registry changes, those would show here as well. We can also pivot from here to see the full ancestry of the process. Here we see a Sankey diagram listing the ancestry of the process. It looks like explorer.exe was used to launch cat.exe, which in turn launched updater.exe. This is excellent information for building a timeline and figuring out what exactly happened here and whether it's a true positive and a potential incident. You'll see there are also registry, library, and file events that occurred as part of this process ancestry lifecycle. Those might be worth investigating for evidence of persistence or lateral movement. Our next step in the playbook asks about DNS queries by this client or returning this destination IP. We don't see anything here aside from some .local queries looking for multicast DNS resources on the local network. The next table is a list of the connections between these two hosts, including timestamps, protocols, durations, and volumes. This is all drawn from ZeekCon records. We can click on the hunt icon again for the full query results instead of just the top five from Instant Insight. Here we see the rest of the list. This second connection shows about six megabytes of data was transferred. We can pivot from that event into a correlation to see what other information we have about this transfer. And as you can see here, we have information about this network flow from Suricata, from Zeek, from our endpoint logs, and from our PFSense firewall. All of it is neatly arranged in this hunt window for investigation, and we could pivot to a full PCAP if we need to. Now we see if there are any file transfers associated with this connection. As you can see, we've got a bunch of text files being transferred, and we can always pivot to that hunt screen and then the packet captures to see what exactly was passing on the wire. Next is a query checking the endpoint logs for file creation or deletion events. We see here that PowerShell.exe created a couple files during the five minute window around this alert, which may be cause for future investigation. Next step is checking for other potential alerts involving this client IP in the 24 hours before the alert we're investigating. As you can see, there are a couple other Go-related network traffic alerts using the same source IP, which seems to provide more verification that this Sandcat alert was legitimate. Finally, the last step in the playbook is searching for alerts for this Suricata rule on other hosts on the network. If you've got a widespread infection, this information is crucial for the containment phase of your incident response. Fortunately, here we don't have any hits. Looks like the only endpoint running SANCAT is .1.108. So there you have it. Paired to this alert was a set of nine concrete investigation prompts, each of which were populated with hunt queries, explanations of why that data might be helpful, summaries via Instant Insight, 
and pivots to use those hunt queries in the full platform to pursue more context or information. We think that this is going to be a huge boon for analysts, speeding up the investigation process and also helping to make sure steps don't get skipped or missed when checking out an alert. How is all this configured on the back end? That's part of the detections module. As you can see here, there's a new tab in the detections interface labeled Playbooks. If we click on that, you'll get the playbook configuration for this alerting rule. At the top, you see this is one of those playbooks intended for an entire category. In this case, ET Malware. Playbooks are all written in this YAML syntax, and the format is an open standard. Users will be able to write their own custom playbooks for particular rules, and other platforms will be able to integrate them as well. Watch our documentation for more details after the release of 24160. We're really excited about playbooks. We think this is going to be a huge help for analysts and investigators working with alerts in their environments. We'll be releasing this in version 24160, so make sure you follow our blog and our social media accounts so you know when it's available for update. If you have questions about playbooks, detections, or the platform that were not covered in this video, please check out our documentation at securityonion.com docs. If you're interested in our training options, learn more at securityonion.com training. And finally, if you have other questions or feedback about playbooks or Security Onion as a whole, please start a new thread on our community discussion forum at securityonion.com discuss. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day.